Hi there, uh, my name is Bill and welcome to another edition of Bushcraft Knife Reviews. Today we're going to be looking at the Enzo Trapper in 01. Uh, the Enzo Trapper is a knife that I've been meaning to review for a long time now. And uh, it's been a great knife. Got it probably maybe two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago from bensbackwoods.com. Um, I bought it as a kit. It was the first knife I ever put together. So it has some of those mistakes which you come to come to love over time. It, like I said, it's an 01 steel, 01 tool steel. Um, it has a 3 and 7 eighth of an inch blade. It's about 8 and 8 inch overall. Um, it's full tang, unlike other um, Scandinavian or um, Scandinavian grind, bl grind blades or blades from uh, Finland or Sweden. It's thick. It is a thick knife. The spine is about an eighth of an inch, which compared to a Mora, let me see, I have a Mora clipper here. Compared to a Mora clipper, you're talking about a serious difference in thickness of the spine. So it's definitely thicker, which takes some getting used to, but uh, it definitely feels as though it's a lot sturdier. Um, of course, because of the full tang, it has a lot more um, weight than the clipper as well. Uh, the kit itself did not come with a sheath, but I made this sheath for it um, out of wood, hollowed out. Basically, I split the wood down the center and hollowed out the inside and uh, made it fit perfectly. As you can see, it stays in. I also uh, put on this leather strap that has some snaps on it and uh, put this little cord on the back which just fell off put this little cord on the back to kind of help pull it out so I did make a sheath for it but it fits uh, it fits lots of standard sheaths you can get from JRE Industries or or that sort of thing so um, full Scandinavian grind like I said um, I don't know if you can see it on here but you can see the grind is higher up than the more clipper grind okay now we're going to try a do some batoning here. See how this fares with uh, doing some curls. Now, uh, I've been getting a lot of comments about, you know, reminding me to bend over when I make curls, or keep my arms straight, rather. So I wanted to mention that while I'm doing this, basically the idea is when you push from here, you're using all your arm strength. When you lock your elbow, and go at the waist, lean over at the waist, you're using your upper body weight in order to do the curling or to make the feather stick. Now uh, the important thing is that it's not necessarily about whether or not your arm is straight or whether your arm's locked. The important thing is that you're letting your body weight do the work. So even if you have your arm slightly bent, the important thing is that you're allowing your body weight to do the work instead of using your own upper body strength. That way you don't get as tired. So now this is doing a, uh, a fine job curling the wood. It, it's cutting it very thin. This is a piece of pressure treated 2x4 by the way that I had behind the house. Another thing to keep in mind is when, you're, when your shavings aren't curling as good as they should. Now this, is, this isn't very good in terms of skill-wise, 
but it kind of gives you an idea of what you're trying to do, it's because you're biting too far into the wood. The closer you stay to the outside, the more your curls are going to be smaller and they're going to be more curled over on themselves. Of course, uh, skilled people can can do this quickly and they can be shallow in their in their curling and uh, also quick. So that, as you can see, the uh, it is curling it. Um, does a fine job with the curls. Scandinavian grind always does a great job because you don't have to worry about adjusting the depth of the cut with a with certain blades uh, for like a, a saber grind or um, I've been told convex so I don't have a, con a convex really to experiment with. Um, it's very much all about how you control the depth of the cut. Whereas with the Scandinavian grind you can basically lay the uh, bevel flat and you're just letting the, the knife itself do the work. You don't have to do much of the adjustment. The only thing you're really responsible for is making sure you don't go too deep or graze across the top. So that's why Scandinavian grind can excel in making curl sticks, fuzz sticks. Here we're going to see what kind of sparks the O1 steel can throw off. I'm going to use the tip of my knife right there. So as you can see, it does a very good job of throwing the sparks off without a problem. Not a problem at all. Now the Enzo also has a, uh, a nice square spine on the blade, um, which is great for doing your fire steel as, we, as I showed, but also with uh, other things such as taking bark off of branches and that sort of thing. Um, because it's O1 and not laminated, it has a, a strong spine. So here's a, just a branch from outside that's green, and we'll see if we can scrape the bark off this without a problem. <laughs> As you can see, the bark comes off really easily with the spine. It would save you a lot of work trying to do it with the blade and uh, makes a quick job of it. Um, I took the Enzo camping about um, two weeks ago and while we were around the campfire I, I did carve this spoon. Um, I believe it was out of willow or holly, I don't remember which. Um, now, obviously, this isn't the best spoon because it's long and it'll be difficult to use, but it was a thin, um, a thin branch, so this is what I got out of it. But it was basically all done with the, with the uh, Enzo. So you can see that it would be capable of doing some of these smaller chores, some of these smaller crafts. Um, I did successfully also carve a netting needle with the Enzo on a paint or a shim, um, but I can't seem to find it. So here you have the curls you have a spoon, it would definitely be capable of doing all of your regular camp chores. So here again we have the Enzo 01 Trapper uh, pictured next to a Mora Clipper. So you can see the size difference and see the uh, grind and all that kind of stuff. Makarta handle, comfortable handles. Um, you can also get, the, get it in various woods, curly uh, birch and stuff like that. It's a, a great knife. Turned out to really do well in the in the woods. Um, I have to admit that for the first couple, geez, for the first year th that I owned it, I really didn't use it too much. I think I was kind of afraid because of the cost. But after I really began to use it, I began to be impressed with it. It's sturdy. It's stable. It's definitely a working knife. It's not designed just to be kept in a drawer or something like that. Cost-wise. I bought the kit. I think the kits go for in the 70 to 80 range at the moment. Um, but you can get a, a completed one that's put together for maybe 110, something like that. So there it is, the Enzo 01 inch Trapper. Uh, definitely a great purchase. Recommend it to anybody. Thanks.